Hi everyone, Tom here from Frontend Beginners. In this video, we'll be looking into CSS Position Sticky. Let's have a look at a simple example to see how this works. I've set up a flex container div here with three child elements inside it. I've made the parent element a flex container by giving it a display property of flex, justified the content to the center and added a gap of 10 pixels between each column. For the child items, I've given them a background color of gray and a width and height of 200 pixels. I've then wrapped the entire flex container inside another div with a class of wrapper. I've given this wrapper a background color of light blue, just so that we can see it more clearly in our examples. Note that I've also given the body element a min height of 200 VH or 200 viewport height units, which makes our body element twice the height of our viewport or browser window. This is just so that we have some room to scroll up and down in the browser. Let's start by looking at the default behavior. If we don't set any position values on our HTML elements, by default, they are assigned a position of static. This just means that they remain positioned according to the normal document flow. When we scroll down, as expected, everything disappears above the top of the viewport. When we give an element a position property of sticky, we're automatically declaring its direct parent element as a sticky container. So if we set our flex container element as the sticky element by giving it a position property of sticky, its direct parent, so the flex container is now sticky, and its direct parent is the wrapper, the wrapper becomes our sticky container. This sticky container is a really important part of the functionality of position sticky. So let's have a look at how this works. We've given our flex container a position value of sticky making it our sticky element. If we scroll down in the browser, we'll see that nothing actually happens. This is because on its own, position sticky won't actually change anything. It's effectively the same thing as giving an element a position of relative, which keeps it in its normal flow in the document, unless we specify its final location using the top bottom, left, or right properties. So to make position sticky work, we need to include at least one other value. For this example, we'll make our flex container, which contains the three gray squares, stick to the top of the window. To do this, we need to add a property of top with a value of zero pixels. You can also just use a value of zero, but we'll stick with zero pixels just for clarity. Together, these two properties, position sticky and top zero pixels, instruct the browser to keep our flex container element in its normal position in the document flow until it reaches a distance of zero pixels from the top edge of the viewport or browser window. When we scroll down now, you'd imagine that our gray squares would remain in place until they're zero pixels away from the top edge of the window where they'd stick in place while we continue scrolling down. However, that's not the case. The reason for this is simple and it has everything to do with the sticky container, which is our light blue wrapper div. Although we've instructed our CSS to stick these squares to the top of the browser window when they reach it, our squares have no available room inside their parent container in which to move. Position Sticky doesn't remove elements from the default document flow, so our squares are not able to escape from their parent container. They can't move below or outside of this blue parent container. If we change the height of our blue wrapper to 400 pixels, so height 400 pixels, giving our flex container with its squares some room in which to move, hopefully this will become clear. Initially, 
our squares begin by touching the top edge of the blue container. Now, when we scroll down and reach the top of the window, our squares are able to remain stuck at the top of the window because there's free space below them inside their container, the blue area. They're free to move. When they hit the bottom of their container, because they can't exit it and have no more room in which to move down into, they begin to scroll out of view along with the blue container itself. If we make the blue container even bigger, let's say 800 pixels, they remain stuck to the top of the window for longer until they reach the bottom edge where they can't escape and get pushed out of the top of the view. If we remove the height from our wrapper div, the sticky container, there's no room for the grey squares to move into and they're not able to escape their parent container. This demonstrates the importance of the parent sticky container. Without enough room to move, our sticky element won't behave in the way we expect. Moving on to another example, let's imagine we want only this middle square to be sticky while the other two remain in their default positions. To do this, we'll remove the position and top properties from our flex container and instead we'll target only the second square or flex child. So let's target the class flex child and use the nth of type pseudo selector to target only the second element of this type or the second flex child element. To make sure we've selected the right element, we'll temporarily give this flex child a background color of green. As we can see in the browser, we've successfully targeted the middle element. Let's remove this background color and apply our position sticky and top zero pixels to this second flex child element. If we scroll down in the browser, nothing is happening. If we think back to the earlier section about the parent sticky container, we'll realize that there's not enough room for our squares to move around in inside their container. This time, because we're targeting one of the flex child items, the parent sticky container will be its direct parent, which is the div with a class of flex container. We're targeting this item here, so this is its parent. Let's now delete our wrapper div just for the sake of clarity, so we can remove this from the HTML and we'll also remove this rule from our CSS. Now let's give our new sticky container, which is the parent of the sticky element, so our flex container. Let's give this flex container a background color of light blue. As we can see in the browser, our new sticky container, which is the flex container div, is not tall enough for the gray squares to move around in. Let's give it a larger height of 400 pixels and see what happens now. As we scroll down, everything remains in its default position until we hit the top edge of the window when the middle child element only sticks to this top edge. When the child element reaches the bottom of its parent container, the blue area, there's no longer any room for it to move down into. It's not able to escape its place in the HTML document, and so it begins to scroll up and out of view along with its parent container. Finally, to demonstrate the positioning properties, let's change our top value for this middle element to 50 pixels instead of zero pixels. Now, when we scroll down, the middle element remains in its default position until we're 50 pixels away from the top edge of the viewport, at which point it begins to stick. Once it's stuck, it will remain 50 pixels away from the top edge of the viewport until it reaches the bottom of its parent container element and can no longer escape. 
You may be wondering why our element is not sticking 50 pixels away from its parent container, but instead is sticking 50 pixels away from the top edge of the window. That's because while the parent sticky container determines whether the sticky element is free to move and behave in a sticky way, the positioning values of top, bottom, left and right do not relate to this container. Instead, a sticky element will stick to what's known as its nearest scrolling ancestor, which in this case is the body element. So our sticky element begins to stick when it's 50 pixels away from the visible top edge of the body element, or in other words, the top of the window. So to recap, if you want an element to behave in a sticky way, set its position property to sticky and provide an explicit position value such as top 50 pixels. Remember that when you declare an item as sticky, you're automatically making its parent container into a sticky container. If your sticky element isn't behaving the way you wanted it to, make sure there's enough room available inside the parent sticky container for the sticky element to move around in. Your sticky item can't escape its parent, so if there's no room for it to move, it will simply scroll out of view and it won't be sticky at all. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.